Right here next to me, we have a 1963 Volkswagen Beetle deck lid. And very unfortunately, the spring retention clip busted off the back of it. Yeah, it's a damn mess. So I've got to come up with a way to try to put this back in here for a local guy. See if I can get this thing together. I don't even know if I'm holding it right because I can't see from this angle, but uh, <laughs> we're going to take care of that today. So welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, The Duckman. <laughs> Let's see what I can do with this deck lid to get this thing put back together. It's a little beat up, but it's otherwise not rusted full of holes. This is the only real problem. The current owner of this lid wanted me to use another lid as a donor, cutting the piece out of that one and making it work. But I think I could fix this, especially for a good YouTube video challenge. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna try to put this thing back together to the original condition it was. So as always, licky likey, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to plug that dingo belly so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links. And we'll be back right after that intro. I love that original dealership badge on there. Isn't that cool? Talk about rarest of the rare. You don't see a whole lot of those surviving anymore. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got. Okay, we got this bit right here. Looks like it lays in there like this. As you can see, this lip is way turned up. It's way out of place from where it needs to be. Any of the spot welds that were in here all pulled free, or some of them just broke loose completely. So that'll need to be fixed. Um, I'm thinking what I should probably be able to do is straighten this out because it's kind of wobbly. It's the best it's original shape. Clean this surface off, clean this surface off. Get this thing fixed the way it's supposed to be so it goes back in here. And run my spot welder back along here in between the spot welds that broke off. That might be a way to do it. Or maybe I can put some holes and put some plug welds in. But this is incredibly thin. This is not even nearly as thick as body metal. It's much thinner than floor pans. This is uh, this stuff is delicate. So I'm gonna have to turn the welder way back. And I've got flux core, so when I go to hit this thing, it's gonna be like a you know, split second, tack, tack, tack. Of course, I gotta fix this portion of it here. If these two pieces go together like that, and it needs to be bent over. And actually, that might even be a way to do it. Maybe put it in there like that, and then bend it down. I don't know. I guess we'll start beating on it and see what we got. That'll be as delicate as I can. I don't want to harm the opposite side by banging through it, so. so right now I'm actually prying up a little bit. Yeah, this is gonna work. Still might have been a better idea to weld those two pieces together and then bend it down. You know, I had better access to the back side of it that way. And I could reattach it, I could weld it better. Oh yeah. This was this was foolish. This was foolish, Duck Man. Why the hell did you do that? As I said, I was gonna find my way through this one. Now that I can see what I've done here. <laughs> Probably hear Biddy screaming in the backyard because she hears my voice in the front yard. Right. We're gonna reattach these two pieces from the back side. That means I gotta clean off a little bit of surface rust. Nothing that's too serious. Easy to clean up. You see the bottom here? You can see where there was one spot weld that it cracked along that. I'm gonna get some welds started there in the middle and then we'll work our way out. And then gradually I'll start bending the 
corner, this corner, and that corner into place so that way those gaps close up. But I think that's how we're going to do this. Alright, I got the welder dialed back as far as it'll go. I'm going to try to just get a couple of tacks on here. Ow. That was foolish. Had my finger on the back side of it. Damn idiot. I think that's gonna work. Yeah, that's gonna work. All right, went over that one more time just to make sure it was adequately penetrated. Now we've got one piece that's on here that's very hot. Let's see if we can kind of work it back into place. This method is good because it's starting to close up those openings that I had seen. So we can get in here. Well, helps if I hook up the ground wire. <laughs> Duck me, you're a moron, Duck man. Hook up the ground wire, you fool. You damn buffoon. There we go. Okay. Come on. There it goes. There it goes. Okay. Now on this side, this side we need to give it a bork. Boy, this is very hot. Very, very hot. Okay. That was definitely the right thing to do. And this here, just gently. This is the wrong body hammer to be using on here. This is all I have available because I broke the handle on the one that has the sharper point on it. Can I get in there? There it is. No, I didn't want to go under. Alright, the battery in my camera apparently died. But I just spent a minute tapping in this lip here to try to bring it back out to look in stock it was all folded out and the points were showing and it was just all wrinkled that looks good now this weld I'm gonna have to go over it again yeah it looks kind of ugly but that's because I have the weld uh, welder turned way down so it just kind of you know leaves blobs on the surface otherwise it just burns through like I did over here anyway I gotta hit up this side yet and I was thinking I'll put the spot welder along these uh, bits here but what I might just wind up doing is running the MIG right along the edge of it. Sandwich them together and then just go ahead and buzz right over it. I don't see any reason why that would be a bad idea. Well anyway, stuff to think about. Alright, um, this corner over here looks like shit, so we're gonna fix that. And then this whole section needs to actually come towards me a little bit here. I mean not much, maybe a millimeter, a millimeter and a half, just a little bit. So I'll bump them in this way and we'll make that happen. Boy, this is fussy. All these little tiny bits. The only thing more fine and delicate that I've ever welded on was this old lady's computer case. Somehow she cracked it. And she didn't want to spend money to have me replace the whole damn thing. So I said, you know what, let me just weld it for you. And I forget what I charged her, $10 or something. Crazy old lady. Sometimes you gotta take care of those old bats. Alright. These two pieces here aren't lining up. There they go. Now they're lining up. Okay. I'll clamp back on here. Right. Let's 
put a little weld on there. And we'll beat on it a little bit more. I don't like how this is sitting though. That's more like it. Yeah, that's more like it. Had to come up a little bit. Okay. Yes, I've been doing this with my wire lately because I notice I get a better ground. I actually clamp the copper right against the steel part. I don't have any of those grounding problems that I used to have a few years back. But I go real slow here. You will burn through this. This is very, very thin sheet metal. I just got told on Instagram today that you can't weld with flux core on metal that's really thin, especially on a higher amperage welder. This is a, um, a Lincoln 140 or something, and people are telling me that it's you know, too much power, you're going to burn through. Yeah, well, you just shorten your trigger pull. You let the glow disappear completely before you hit it again. My wire speed and my amperage dialed back, and uh, looks pretty effective to me, guys. I don't know what the hell you think's not possible. No! Nope, that burned through. Went too fast. back over here inspecting it's like we need a little touch up in here perfect it's not too bad I close this part in here let's give that a squeeze Can't get the clamp too close I don't want to weld the clamp to it of course Just a little bit at a time, and this is going to be kind of ugly, but uh, it's going to have to be ground off. I'm trying to not burn through, that's the most critical thing here. It should come off now. <laughs> Welded the clamp on there just a little bit. <laughs> Probably going to be stronger than the original spot welds that were on here to begin with. Boy, I made a mess out of that. That is ugly. That is ugly. But again, it's going to have to. Oh. 
all be grabbed off. Alright. Still needs a little bit of polishing up, but uh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. I'll get in here with a Dremel and I'll grind that out to make it look factory. Same with up in here, all these little swedge lines, and I'll try to take down the rest of the welds. It's not too much more that I could do with a tool that big. I'll take that one. Well, okay, that wind sure picked up out here. It's gonna storm like the Dickens later today, and this uh, is the precursor of it. Anyway, we're still working with this deck lid here. Well, you know, actually, I'm just about finished up. I went ahead and coated it with some cat piss. For those of you that don't know, that's uh, phosphoric acid, aka OSFO. There's links down below in the video description if you're interested in some. What that does is it prevents rust from coming back. Uh, I don't know how soon he's going to get this thing painted, but uh, this thing is solid once again. Now you notice this is shiny metal over here, and that's because the uh, acid is not reacting with it. The reason why it's not reacting with it is because that's lead. I actually experimented with some of Dad's old lead tools. And a lot of that stuff predates from when I was born. It's been sitting in his toolbox as long as I could ever remember. So I decided to take some of the stuff out and start experimenting with it. Now, I didn't demonstrate it on video because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And um, much similar to, uh, you know, tinning a pipe or, or soldering pipes together, it, it seemed very much like that, except you had a much heavier, bigger piece of lead, and I was working with just a blowtorch, so it did burn some of the paint off that's under here, but that's not going to be too big of a deal, because this whole thing's getting repainted anyway. But that helped to uh, solve some of the burn-through holes that the welding had done, because that steel was just thinner than most body metal. Now, this stuff is incredibly thin, but I went and reinforced the whole underside through here, by welding this entire two pieces together all the way along that edge. And this thing is solid now and it should last another 50 years. I don't see why not. There's the other side. There's what we did. I just simply ground off some of the welds that started to push through a little bit. No big deal. I tried not to take off that much metal because the outer skin is actually pretty tough, but this inner piece was thin, really thin. But uh, I think that's gonna be good to go. So, likey, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to plug the dingle bell so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out duckshit.net for all my different social media links. And as I feel more proficient with the lead sledding, I uh, actually might start doing some of that on video. You guys might start seeing that. And, uh, you know, I kind of wish now at this point that uh, I had experimented with that on Eleanor. That certainly would have um, changed how I put things together. That's for damn sure. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.